Marty, thanks so much for your time, mate. It's been a heck of a season for you so far. I, I keep going back to that loss to Taranaki. Is that in some ways a good loss for you, just given the fact that it actually reminds you that, ooh, if you're off your game and you're not ready, that a loss can happen? Yeah, you're probably you're 100% right there. We, we reflected on that game massively uh, around lessons learned, around things we did wrong, how we went in the red. Um, how, and probably primarily how we weren't what we said we wanted to be. Um, so it's really set us up around our identity and what we um, believe in this year. Yeah, because, you know, the word consistency just springs to mind. I mean, you, you know, you've, you've, you've been the machine that we all expect you to be, but that was just a tripwire. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of an anomaly. It's one I've gone back to a couple of times, and uh, and we, we've talked about, you know, what happened and what did we get wrong in that game, and... Um, but yeah, consistency is key for us. Uh, consistency and momentum, generating momentum and being better than we were the week before. Um, and that's something that's really resonated with the guys since that, um, that little hiccup. You know, Marty, because you approach this from a different point of view, I, I guess, than every other coach. I mean, Wellington's had eight wins. I mean, that's pretty bloody strong as well. But when you, you know, excellence is not only expected of you guys, it's demanded of you guys. And it's demanded of you season after season after season. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it's been a good thing, and I, and I think that's uh, something we spoke about at, at, at the start of the year around the legacy that comes with representing Can- uh, Canterbury. Um, the thing that I didn't think we got right was was necessarily the man who was wearing it didn't believe in himself enough. So when you inherit legacy, um, you should wear it like a suit of armour or a cape like Superman, as, as I tell the guys, rather than letting it weigh you down, uh, having this inherited legacy and everything that Canterbury's done well. So... We've done a lot of work around uh, making sure, ensuring the man that wears the jersey is strong enough to wear it um, and, and believes in himself and, and, and his story to, to, to get to this point um, and his place in this team and, 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 and on our honours wall where we um, have every member who's played for Canterbury sitting up in our strategy room. Wow. So, okay. So you, you, what you're talking about is you're talking about embrace this, aren't you? <clears throat> yeah, embrace it. So openly embrace who we are, openly embrace that people, and, and I'm not from Canterbury, but... But being brought into this environment, I love this team. Um, but the thing that comes with it is that there's not many places around the, the rugby fraternity that love Canterbury or like Canterbury. No. Oh, and that's no. the whole <laughs> Paul, Paul yeah. I'm yeah. from Wellington, so, mate. I mean, we've just been ramrod yeah. ram- ro- 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 by them for years. But also, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because you can build upon that. I mean, it actually creates that kind of us against them stuff, doesn't it? Oh, mate. That's not, yeah, in, in a way, I, I think that. It's not so much an us against them. I can't change the way that people feel about Canterbury. They're going to like you or unlike you. Tall Poppy's going to do it anyway. But what they will do by the, your actions and how you hold yourself is they'll respect you. So if you're playing a style of rugby and a consistent style and you believe in what you're doing and what you are, people will envy you. And, and sometimes that'll fuel them to try and knock you off a little bit more. And, and we live in, in a tall poppy society where people want to do that all the time. And our guys have, have really embraced this this year around... We don't, we don't care if people like us or hate us from other regions, but we want them to respect us. And if they want to beat us, they have to be at their best. Yeah, and, and there's also there's a, there's, there's a, an, another thing about, you know, playing for that jersey and playing for your province is it's an, it's an underlying kind of humility that you have to have as well. What I'm trying to sort of get at is, I suppose, is I would never expect your team to do this, the showboating post-match stuff, say, like the Penrith Panthers did. And I don't really care whether they did or didn't, but I just wouldn't expect to see it from, a, from your team. No, no, I wouldn't either. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't seen too much of the the, the Penrith stuff. Um, but but our, our guys, we, we've brought our team back to the community a lot this year. We were sort of cooked breakfast for underprivileged kids or in communities around around the district because I believe the NPC is a community based team. Um, you, as you get further up through Super Rugby and the All Blacks, it's a high performance group and it's all around the the the, the, the their performance, if you like, but us identifying with our communities more and getting people in behind us and knowing where we come from is really important and also that humility that you show with a little bit of success whether it be good success or, or, or and, and the other side of things losing you know holding your head high and being proud of, of what you've done Marty Burke is with us this is the Canterbury coach Northland 435 tomorrow it's uh, after the Wellington versus Hawks Bay game and then there's just one after that as well, style of rugby this year. What have you What have you wanted to do, and what do you think has the the team is doing that says, "Hey, this is Marty Burke's coach." <laughs> Great question. Uh, probably they look like we're having having fun, enjoying our work, not putting too much pressure on ourselves. But 
uh, a, a lot of believing in ourselves and if it takes me back through uh, the start of the year we have a bit of an identity so we, we want to play like Canada, Canterbury teams in the past around having a really dominant forward pack and, 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 and pe- being feared in that way and we also want to play a brand of rugby that's relentless we, 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 we don't let teams off the hook um, and we've got that well we've got that, done that well in, in parts of the year and, and I think that's something that we're working towards and if we're lucky enough to continue post quarter final as we want to keep growing in that space how much do you like knockout rugby? One-off matches, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's probably the thing I've thought about. Like, you know, round-robin stuff means for nothing. When you get to quarters, everyone's on zero points, and it's just really the, the, what's on the scoreboard at the end of the day sort of dictates whether you get to come to work on Monday. So um, you, you love it and you hate it. I think you love it if you could win it by 50 points, but you, you, you hate it by grinding it away. But it's, as someone once said to me, it's... A, it's a privileged right only for a select few, so through the pressure and stress of it all, um, and when you don't have it, you miss it, so I'm looking forward to it. Is it where you learn the most about not only yourself but your team, do you think? Um, yep, but probably so. <laughs> sometimes can be a hard lesson. I think I, I, I'm learning every week with this, these group of men more than I'm probably teaching them. Um, but definitely you, you, you probably learn more about yourself and telling how you operate through through high pressure um, finals scenarios. I don't have to tell you, mate. That Northland side, they can play. We've seen that all season, and also that they have a mentality and a freedom that they kind of they 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 love the fact that they're the little boy and they want to knock over big brother. They love all that stuff, mate. I don't have to tell you that. No, no. I coached with uh, Marty Veal in the uh, USA this year. He was the the defence coach, <laughs> so yeah, I know what's coming, and 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 I love their story of how they've. Uh, reached their success this year and, and the things they've done they've beaten you know a couple of those top tier teams this mm-hmm. year for the first time and yep. they've generated some momentum they've shown they can go the distance they're a physical team and they can play and um, yeah, it's a, there's, a, there's a lot of teams around the country that I'm envious of but th- their story's a pretty cool one So your players and we had Ian Foster on the show on a Tuesday and one of the questions that I, I put to him was You know, we used to have a a word called bolter in New Zealand rugby, and I know that you know that, mate, as well. And it's just like, is there room for that? Are there there players in this NPC that the All Black coach and selectors are looking at and going, yeah, mate, I mean, we've got the All Blacks uh, 15 to select as well as the All Blacks to select. Can can you still come from NPC and make those sides? Because if not, I mean, we've lost a hell of a something, haven't we? Yeah, I agree. Um, is there room for a bolter a year out from the World Cup? I'm not sure in this instance. Um, but definitely in, in the New Zealand 15, giving those those next group of guys an opportunity to, to showcase uh, their abilities in, in those sort of that, that two-game environment. Mate, I, I, I'm, I love a fairy tale, mate, so yeah, I'd love to see yeah. the old bolter get in there. So Same. that's the... the you know, I'm the same around club rugby. I love it when, a, you know, a club battler comes in and, and becomes part of an NPC team and does really well. So, um, yeah, as I said, I think it's crossed. There'll be one or two in there. Well, but look, I mean... Day, you just want a team to do well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to, how to, how to say this in a, in, a, in a way that it's going to come across in the right way, but I love Ollie Jaeger, mate. I love that guy. I love looking at him, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> God, I mean, he, 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 he looks to me like a guy I'd love to play with or be in the dressing room. And I look at that chap like him, and I think... You know, maybe he hasn't been in the right rep teams or whatever it is, or gone through the you know the high performance gymnasium stats or whatever it is. But he's a guy that is rugby. He's got rugby written across his face. Yeah, mate, he's got a pretty good story. And if you like him from everything you see, if you sit down and have a beer or conversation with him, mate, he'll go up and in the pigs. Oh, as fantastic! Well. So to hear. He's, he's, he's a he's a fantastic human. He's a, he has the ability to balance sort of sort of rugby and, and life really well in there, and he's always got a smile on his face, and and he's. Well, yeah, I can't say enough about the guys. He's a, he's a, he's a top man. And so he, glad to hear that. So glad to hear that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I was hoping you'd say. Tell us just briefly about yourself before before we go. So where did where did you come from? You said you're in the States, right? So how did how'd you get here, where you are now? <laughs> nah, so, yeah, so before the States, I, I coached uh, Bar Penny for a couple of years with Clayton McMillan, uh, Mike Delaney and Mike Rogers. Um, yeah, when, when, Clayton, when Clayton went over to the Chiefs, I ended up um, getting an opportunity with Canterbury. Um, as an assistant coach last year, um, and in between the off seasons, I'd go and do little stints over in New York with the New York MLR team with Andy Ellis and the Nitty and all the scatter. Great and fun! Great fun, mate! Great fun! Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Awesome times. You know, beautiful city. I never thought I'd be a big city boy, but um, 
you know, coming from Tauranga and then going to Hawke's Bay, but um, seeing some of those those places you see on the movies was pretty cool. Isn't that um, the coolest thing about New York? You walk around, mate, and you think you're in a movie because you just the, everything you've seen is in there. Oh, there's the Empire State Building. Bloody hell, mate. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I reenacted a few movies myself over there thinking <laughs> I was cool in that. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, great talking to you. and Great making your acquaintance, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers, mate. Have a good one.